What's up guys, Joe Holland here. Brand new lake for me. I'm gonna start a new little series here on YouTube showing you how I break down new bodies of water. We might even go to some of the older bodies of water that I know about already and just show you kind of how I break it down with electronics and just visually. This one's a new one to me. I've heard it has small mouth and large mouth in it. It's about two to three miles long, maybe about a half mile wide at the widest. So it's not a big body of water, but you can take everything I'm doing and use it on a smaller body of water or a much larger body of water, just segment it, you know, break it down into segments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our eyeballs and keep our chin up and look around to find out certain things that we're looking for, but we're also gonna use our electronics too. Now this boat is equipped with three live scopes on it. We're not gonna use the live scopes to find fish here because I know not everybody has a live scope or two live scopes or three live scopes. So I wanna show you guys how I find it with traditional sonar, how I find it with side view sonar, which pretty much everybody has now. And if you don't have it, it's really one of the most overlooked, underutilized tools. I've been using it for 15 years now. Um, to find fish and find structure. So I'm up here in Maine, central mid coast lake. Fish should be pulling off the banks now. It's after the 4th of July. It's really hot out. It's hot today. It's been a pretty nice hot stretch going. So we're way past post spawn. A lot of your baits going out. A lot of the ponds have turned over and a lot of your best oxygen in the lake is going to be in deeper water. So we're going to look for offshore structure. We're going to look for rocks, boulders, ledge, sunken trees, sunken boats, anything else that we could find that a fish might be hiding in and predator fish might be looking to ambush prey that prey might be hiding into. For lures, we'll probably just use like a Ned rig, a jig, maybe a Sanko and maybe a spinner bait or another search bait. First, we're gonna take one hour and try to break this down in high speed. I'm gonna give you guys a screenshot of how I do it with my mapping and also how I do it with the side scan technology. So let's see if we can chart this lake as well. Reading maps, I cannot unlock maps. Okay, back. All right, so visually what we're gonna be looking for is contours of the land. Like over here, I see a pretty high bank with a lot of elevation. I'm gonna guess that that side's deeper than the other. This side is really flat, behind me super flat, sandy looking. I'm also gonna be looking for vegetation. We have rice coming up, we have pad fields, we have arrowheads, and that looks like about it. So I'm gonna be looking for areas that hold different types of vegetation, which also grows out of a different type of bottom, like your ryegrass mostly grows out of like a sandy, gravelly bottom, and your pads are gonna grow up out of muck or pretty much anything, and arrowheads are usually in like a gravelly bottom as well. So I'm also gonna look at the banks to see if there's big rocks, small rocks, giant boulders, I'm gonna be looking for blowdown trees. I'm gonna be looking for runs of docks. I'm gonna be looking for buoys offshore. And those are some of the things I'm gonna be looking for up here. And on the electronics, I'm just looking for structure, breaks, edges, and stuff that a fish might hold to. So let's get to it. Oh. So we're gonna budget one hour to try to break down this whole body of water. Then we're gonna go back and fish it. So stay tuned. We're not really running good and low. We're running good open, but not low right now. Might need a little tarp cleaning. Ah, dog. All right, here we go. All righty, so you guys can see the screen too. I have traditional sonar on the bottom left, chart on the top left, and side scan is looking 150 feet both directions. Now this GT56 will pick up side scan up on plane, which we might do some high speed on plane once we figure out what we're in. Right now we're still on like a six foot flat with some grass it looks like, and like a sandy soft bottom. Nothing hard yet. I'm gonna bring her up on plane and see if we can scan on plane. Got a tuber up in front of us. Didn't look like there was much there while we were on pad. 
but there's a big point that comes out here. So I like to focus on those for gravel, for rocks, and maybe some boulders too. Right away, we got 12 foot of water. A lot of stuff in the column. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at there. If that's just algae or... I don't think they're fish, but could be. The bottom showing like a soft bottom here. Kind of sandy. Gonna get a little closer to shore so I can shoot all the way in that 150 feet, at least till the first break. All right, so we got some rocks ahead of us on a point where there's a camp. There could be some rocks out from that. So you're starting to see the inner edge now on the right side of the side scan. And we're gonna be laying down waypoints and fishing those after if we find some structure. Most main lakes do have offshore structure. It's a really glacial area where the glaciers tore through and left a lot of remains, so good for us. Those are patches of grass. Might be worth marking, like a sand hump. It's off a point, so I kind of like it, so we're going to mark that. So I'm going to throw, uh, let's see, I'm just going to throw like a little red hump on it. Mark it. Alright, so we're back to scanning. A lot of pads in there, it's good to know. We're gonna focus on offshore today. Where am I? Oh, there we go. So we're gonna focus on offshore today, and uh, but we're not gonna overlook everything entirely with pads. We're looking for nice blowdowns. Anything a predator might get inside of to, to ambush some prey. So we're coming up into five foot. It's a little bit shallow for structure. I see a buoy with a rock protruding out of the water over here. So we're gonna go out from that and hopefully some more will come out. I wanna kind of find some structure off the break. So I'm gonna move us out off, off the five foot, get us down into that 10, 15 foot. Don't know how deep this is. A lot of lakes in this region are like 25 to 30 foot deep maximum. And if we don't start finding some structure soon, I'll jump up on plane again and try to search for some at a higher speed because this thing will pick it up with the sonar and with the side scan at a higher speed. We're kind of holding firm at about 13 foot and pretty much it's been a nothing bottom all along, which is gonna make it awesome when I find stuff. Like if you came out here and it was just all structure, then it's really harder to find the fish, but. I don't mind going a long time without finding some structure because that means they're going to be on that little bit of isolated structure that there is. All pads, all rice grass in there. That's telling me it's a pretty hard bottom up against the bank at least. Sandy gravelly. It's got some arrowheads mixed in so it's definitely gravelly in there. coming up on another point a little drop off coming around that point which is cool definitely starting to see a lot more boulders against the shore oh we had a little bit of rock right there yeah we got some gravel and rock coming off this point so there you go there's an underwater point with a top of six that's definitely worth marking. That's definitely gonna hold some fish. So that point right there, that comes out underneath. We're gonna throw a mark on that. We're gonna mark the very end of it with a waypoint. And then we're gonna mark the top of it with another waypoint. 
All right, so you can see number 170, 171 is that actual gravel hump coming off the bank. So we'll, we'll, we should be able to catch some fish off that. Points are great to hold fish anyway, and underwater points are way better than regular points. So it, that should hold some fish. It could hold the biggest fish. I'm hoping we find some humps out offshore. You know, we'll do a middle run, getting a little shallow here. I've noticed anytime I get in that five, five, six foot range, there is grass on the bottom. So definitely a fertile pond. Not really marking much grass. I'm not putting waypoint points down for the grass because I pretty much found it everywhere so far. Looks like a big dead old pine tree in on the bank there. So I'm gonna make a mental note of that. I could throw a waypoint over there too, but. I'll be able to visually see that when I'm ready to fish it. And then we have a really big point that comes out, one of the biggest on the lake, and it has ledge out of the water. So we might have some more ledge running off, and then typically you'll find big boulders on the sides of that ledge where they've rolled off the ledge or a glacier deposit. Yeah, there's a boulder right there, as you can see. So I'm seeing two boulders on the right right now, similar to the size that's at on shore. Not quite enough to hold fish, in my opinion. You know, if I'm there, I'm going to put a cast on it. I'll throw the live scope at it, but it's good to start seeing some structure. But we haven't seen much for depth yet. We've seen like 12, 13 feet, nothing crazy. Finally, it took almost a, almost uh, three quarters of the way around the lake. Or... All right, so there it is. We'll we'll slow down, get a lot better look, on, a lot better mark on it now that uh, we know where it is. We found it at higher speed. So now we're straight again. We're gonna watch our unit. All right, there's gravel on the left. I already see that. I like that a lot. There's some boulders mixed in. Super super gravelly hard hump. It's gonna hold a lot of crawdad. It's gonna hold some of your biggest largemouth and smallmouth in the lake. And now you can see we're coming up on the edge, 10 foot on the top with a boulder on top. And looks like we kind of nipped the end of it. And then I'll mark the, the, the leading edge too. So we've got the perimeter of that hump marked. I was, I don't know if you guys heard it or not, but as I was running, I see like one, two, three, for four blowdowns in the water on this rocky point here. So definitely want to key in on that. There's a stretch of docks that look like shallow water um, here, but there are some docks and you got a shaded shoreline over here with oak trees, which is never a bad thing in the heat of the summers to fish the shade or shade line. All right, you're seeing that gravel on the right. We're gonna go over this hump one more time. I'll zoom in on my marks so you can see my marks. The blue dots is kind of the perimeter with that middle one being the very top. So I know where the top of the crown is. That is going to hold some fish. I promise you that. We're going to drag a jig or a net rig across the top of that. Beautiful. All right, let's see if we can find some more of those. That thing was not obvious coming off the bank. A lot of times, you know, it'll follow a point and just keep going, but there's no point right here. so. You gotta find it with your electronics like that. There we go. There's another one. Sweet. 
there's another one right there now guys you're gonna be on lakes sometimes that have no charts at all like this one this one doesn't even show a, a blue circle <laughs> uh, and then sometimes you're gonna have it already charted for you you know and then you can just find it that way but garmin does have the feature where i could be charting this as i go i just i don't really know how to do it yet i've done it a few times but um and in this first hour i'm just going to show you how i found stuff old school so we just went over a hump i'm going to go back at a lower speed and get it graphed really well see what's on it for fish or structure or bottom i can see a couple boulders right there already i definitely want to drag a, a jig through that section on the top left of the side stand nice looks like boulder ledgy with gravel running way out to the right so 150 feet or more to our right uh kind of a narrow path right here in the middle and then a big hump out to the right so this could be the best hump on the entire lake so we're gonna get this thing marked i'm gonna mark a top right there with uh what was i using for a top that i guess i'm gonna mark this top over here all right yeah that gravel runs way out even further into the lake than i had marked oh that's ledge right there six foot super super ledge you can see how shiny that is and the shadow it's throwing so it shows it does have a nice drop off and it's actually ledge with boulders off of it so let's get that marked we're gonna mark the ledge let's put a blue sim blue dot on that and i'm gonna mark that boulder right there and let's mark the end of it that we see out there all right so those are all spots i want to get a cast bow show and i want to go look at the very outer tip of it and see if i'm missing anything or if there's a boulder pile off the tip always look out off the ends for like that one pile of rocks that just kind of got pushed by the glacier or, or rolled off the incline because those sometimes will hold your best fish on that piece of hump a good resting spot it's a good ambush spot there's a lot of reasons why that big fish will hang out on those so we should be off the end of the hump right now should be able to pick it up on the left side pretty soon yeah so this is so we're off the hump now let's go look at the inside So we got that connected now and marked and see if there's any more you can see the, the marks ahead of us that's going to put us over the shallowest spot and the tops so i'm going to turn the boat so we can see if there's anything in past our shallowest marks we're pretty far offshore right here there's a good three to four hundred yards offshore so this is definitely an isolated offshore hump all right, I got this spot marked. Nice boulders and chunk rock on it. Right there. And then this stuff up here, that looks more like grass, but right here where I just put the cursor is a rock. You can see like where the glacier went through and made a bunch of deposits. Eight foot of water grass all over it so another blow down some lily pads all right so that was about 45 minutes we kind of got it broke down as far as we know uh we got one offshore hump right here on our left which i like a lot we had a point that ran out over there we had a couple weird various hard pieces of bottom over here both ends have significant large grass flat so a lot of fish could be hanging in those and then it looked like anywhere there was six foot or shallower was a grass flat all the way in so this side looked like it had a lot of it lay downs over here one lay down there two nice runs of docks it looks like the vegetation on the perimeter of fish is everywhere all of it looked good but we're going to focus on the offshore stuff right now i'm going to go to town with a jig and a ned rig off the with the hard bottom stuff i'll put the live scope on so you can see what's there for fish when we get in the grass i might throw like a top water over it or like a sanko into it or we'll see what it looks like when i get into the grass 
water looks fairly clear. We're gonna use some green pumpkin colors. It's not very deep, so just like a 3 8 ounce football head jig with a, with a trailer on it. But here we go. Kind of walk you guys through it, talk you through it. All right, so we're just pulling up on our first waypoint right now. This is 190. This should be out off the outer edge. And it's about 100 feet away. I think I marked some gravel on the very tip of this, this hump, and then it kind of runs into the left. So we're going to fish the outer edge first. There it is at 70 foot. There's a lot of stuff like in the water column. I think it's like algae poles. All right, there you go. So at 70, there might be a fish on top right there. See if I reached it or not. Yeah, just barely, just barely reached the tips. That was a pretty good cast onto it. And I got that little Ned rig. I don't know how finicky or fussy these guys are gonna be right now. Could be a fish at 65 on top. But it's gonna run out to our left. Some structure right there on the very tip. Let's try to get a cast in that at about 40 foot away. See all those rocks, those chunk rocks and gravel that we marked earlier. Just kind of dragging that Ned rig through them, see if there's anything hiding in the rocks. Looks like a fish at 50, right on that secondary edge. So we're gonna wanna get something up there. That could be a nice large mouth, 50 foot away. Yep, here comes a fish to eat it. Here's a bite. Little guy. Nothing big. But we got a bite. We got an offshore bite. Nice small lady. All right. That one ate the jig. Up on top of that hump. Right off one of our waypoints. Man, I don't think that guy's ever been caught before. Nice dark smallie right there. So there's smallmouth in here. That info was good. I was told there was both in here, but I'm not sure. Best way to find out, I've always figured, is go find out for yourself. The next one marks the top of that hump. couple fish over there for sure got one on he's a pretty good one might be a largey big jump coming up <laughs> it's a smallie cool uh no he's a largey all right offshore largemouth right there guys that's what we were looking for. A little bit of fishing, we found them. There he is, followed it up. Nice pass on the jig. I was just reeling that in. Nice one right there, guys. Eating that jig. Pretty good largey.
those look pretty fishy right there at 45. Definitely a couple fish there at 55 up in those rocks. This should be a fish pretty soon. Yep. There he is. Coming up. Pretty good one, I think. Pretty good one, I think, folks. Let's get a look at them. Got these offshore largies fight hard. Yeah, it's a good one. He's a chunk. That's a tournament grade fish. A little bit better fish for you right there. Nice tournament grade fish. And a couple more like him. That's a super healthy fish. He probably doesn't see many lures out here. Where does buddies go? Not always the biggest one that gets to eat first when there's a school of them. But that was up on that gravel rock up on the top. I think I'm right back into another fish in there too. Yeah, here we go. Oh, he dropped it. I was reeling down to get the slack. Shoot. Dang it. Oh, good bite. Got him. <laughs> he followed it. A little largey. I don't always point my live scope where I'm fishing. There's a... Uh, Little tip and secret for you guys. There's a there's a nice largey right there. I mean these are these are all good fish to put in a tournament bag. At least to get something started. Nothing that we're too proud of yet, but a couple might be there at the end of the day. We'll see. Gotta start somewhere. They're all big until you get five, is what my old man always oh. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> just missed one. They're all big till you get five is what he always used to say when, when you were tournament fishing, and that is the truth. Back into these rocks. We're in about seven foot. So I don't see any fish in there, but that doesn't mean there's not fish in there. It's so, so rocky in the, oh yeah, there's a fish in there. So I just moved my jig and spooked him, but we'll see if he comes back, just circles around it and bites. Oh, he did too. Man, why are they not holding on? They're not really murdering this jig. I think I got two or three chasing right now. There he is. Nice. Whoa, that one's got some pull to him. That one's got some pull. Might be a little better fish, might have just been close. But they're hiding in those rocks pretty good. Yeah, another good one. Yep, another good fish right there, guys. Eating that jig. Nice, healthy largemouth. Get him back, see if we can get another one. Just kind of dragging that jig over those rocks. Nice gravel chunk rock. Just dragging that 3 8 ounce football head jig through it. Waiting for something to tap, tap, tap on the other side or thunk it. Or just pick it up and run. There it is. Got him. Got him. Never even saw him on the live scope because they're, they're in those rocks so tight. This one's digging deep. He might be bigger. Big jump. Yeah, it's a nice, nice large mouth. A little bit bigger, bigger than the last couple. Yep. There you have it. There you go, guys. Another nice largey. So that's just putting in the work right there. And, you know, it's just side scan technology that got me these fish. I'm using the live scope now to 
pick them apart, but I'm not even seeing them on the live scope as much because they're just buried in those rocks. You do see them from time to time, but for the most part, just fishing my waypoints. I could have just the map up right now and be catching just, oh, catching just as many fish. And you could do this on any lake. You could do it in a cove if you want. You know, you don't, it doesn't really matter the size of the water you're trying to break down. You gotta always deal with the jet ski. It doesn't matter the size of the water you're trying to break down. You know, if this was a 20 mile lake, I'd be doing the same thing, but just in smaller segments. And you just break it down in segments that you can handle, you know, or that you have time for, or that you like, like the looks of areas. But there's still a lot of room still in front of me that we haven't fished yet. I just want to work this spot with, you can see all these ups and downs with the rocks. Looks pretty sexy. And if you really focus on those rocks and, and don't move the, the live scope, you do see some fish move in between those rocks. But we're just targeting the rocks, knowing that, you know, having confidence that there should be fish in those rocks. We're not looking for any specific fish with a live scope or, or, um, or picking them off one by one like you can do in open water. All right, that's, the, that's where the height of it is, so. Actually see some pads. Oh, there's a bite already. Oh, you son of a gun. That joker bit on the way down. Here they come. They're chasing it out. Missed him too. I think I got a school of smallies. Real small ones and a bunch of them. They're just destroying this jig. There we go. We got one hooked now. Yeah, maybe they're not as small as I thought. There's a pile of them though. Holy cow, there's a pile of them. Oh, it's a largey. And he's not bad. Did you guys see how many there were on that live scope? And they were all this size. That's a good quality fish. Wow, let's get right back in there. Oh, gonna have a bite any second now. Yep, got him. Yeah, so this gravel bar, like I said, you find out in a hurry, they're here. Another nice largey, a little bit bigger than the last one. Oh yeah, that's a tournament fish right there. Nice tournament fish there, one of the biggest of the day so far. And there's a pile of them here, so that kind of shows you scanning. When you're scanning like that, it's not a huge spot, but, oh, man, I hope every fish eats a jig like that. All right, yeah, there he is. Nice fish right there, guys. Right on that gravel bar, and there's a, there's a lot of fish there, so I want to try to kind of stay on them. If I can. See how big they get. Love fishing offshore like this. Love getting that jig bite. Not sure where the school went, but I doubt they get too far off this structure. Yeah, there they are. Got him. Another good one. And there's a pile of them. Big jump. Oh, nice. Holy cow, look at them all on that live scope. There's another dozen as big or bigger. That is the juiciest of the juice right there. Underwater point. Oh yeah. So we, that's like two pretty solid culls right there, guys. Rufus again. That wasn't coming out. Golly, I like it. Wow. Another nice large mouth. Roof of the mouth. Now don't you go and tattle on us. The tournament they'd be going in the box. Oh. Misty. But he came back. 
he came back. Oh, the whole school's coming, and I'm in the trolling motor. Trying to keep a cast on that juice. Yep, I'm in the juice. So I just gotta wait for the fish to get back to it that followed him out and followed my jig out. And then I'll flick my jig a couple times. First one to notice it, it's probably gonna get a, get a new piece of jewelry. Yep, there he is. Yeah, nice. That's a good one. This is why you put in the work right here, guys. Simple, oh, he's pulling drag. Simple uh, side scan technology that's been out for years. Kind of curious to see what this one is. He got a little drag on me and stayed deep. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yep, new lunker. New lunker right there for the day so far. He had his mouth open the whole fight, but nice quality large mouth right there for you guys. Probably backlit as heck, but I gotta have boat control with this wind. But wow, there you go right there. Nice large mouth on the jig. He'd be going in the box. That's one of the biggest of the day so far for me. And back to the juice is about 60 that way. See if we can keep this going. These are the spots you dream about where you can just roll up and catch five, 10 fish on a jig offshore. Thunk, thunk, thunk before it even hits bottom or you get it to bottom and you pop it a few times. Then it just starts swimming sideways on you. But first time ever here, never fished this spot, never fished this lake. And uh, 40, 45 minutes of scanning, you know, sometimes at, at high speeds and we're already on a good bag of fish for a tournament. Hopefully I didn't kill the spot. Uh, is that a bite? Yeah, that's a bite. That's a good bite. <laughs> I love it. Golly, do I love it. This one's going to give us a jump out of the depth. Nice jump. Another just solid, solid largemouth. Solid largey right there, guys. Get him back. If I was super old school, I'd throw a, one of those orange floating buoys on this spot or next to it and know where to cast. But since I have the forward facing sonar, I can just kind of look around and be like, okay, there it is. That's the rock I'm looking for. The gravel bar coming off this point, and it was the first piece of structure we found actually. So those long stringy things you're seeing at 40 and 45 are actually pads. Oh, there's a bite. Nice. One right after another. We found the mother load. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna tell you guys that thing was about 20 pounds because I didn't land them, but he was a little bit above average from the other ones, but not much. They're always bigger when you don't catch them, right? Yep. came back. He's just small smallies, a couple pounders. Might be two or three there. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Thought it was small smallies. Here's a fish. Got him. Got him. Smally, nice one. Right on that waypoint. Sweet. There's two there. They are fighting over that jig hard. Lost him.
largy on a tree. So far we've caught a fish on every piece of structure offshore. So we got a couple small isolated ones and we also have that really cool grass line. So let's take a look. All right, this one was similar to that one where we just caught all those fish. So I was gonna go fish the grass and then last second I was kind of like, eh. Why don't we go fish a pattern? That's a pile of fish right there. Pile of fish on something that I didn't have marked. It's like a log or... I want to get another throw with that. That could be... Oh, one chasing me down. Yeah. Before I could get another throw on it. That's a spot right there I did not have marked. And it's got some fish on it. Nice largey there. And we're kind of sitting on it. Nice jig bite right on that hump this is the one I didn't have marked oh that's a pig that is the biggest of the day so far if we can get him up that'd be nice if he comes up I'm gonna flop him no nope. yeah that's that's a pig that's a tournament fish right there guys. I'm gonna try to boat flip him got him all right yes Ooh, that's what we're after right there. Ah, nice. I'm gonna back off this spot in case there's more out here. And I'll try to turn you guys so you don't have to see that sun. But that is a nice tournament fish right there on the jig. And that wasn't, I can't even say that was from putting the work in. That was in between spots. And I just happened to see it on the, uh, on the scope. But big big large mouth right there for Maine nice fish in any tournament we would not be turning him down all right so let's uh let's get a couple more throws at that boulder that was pretty awesome see if I can find it again I gotta throw a dot on it I think that's it right there, 50, 50, 55. It's a really tall, big boulder. And it had a pile of fish on it too. It wasn't just one big one and, and one small one. But I put the boat right on top of it because I didn't know it was there. The cool thing is it's not far from another one of my waypoints. So we might be, we might have another spot that'll hold a four pounder right behind it. But I must have missed this. This must have been outside of 150. On, oh, we got a fish coming in on the other side of that rock. Yeah, there's a bite. There's a set. Another big one. Another big one. I love fishing. Oh, how big is this one? How big is this one? Are we putting a tournament bag together right now, folks? Oh yeah, that's another pig. Yeah, definitely another, another good tournament bag. Oh yeah, oh that's a big fish. Oh boy. <laughs> Chunky. Another really, really pretty good tournament fish came off that boulder. All right, let's get him back, catch another. How much fun is this? I have to get that boulder marked. I think I can mark it on my pan optics. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. 
And I'm gonna put like a, I'll put like a nine on it. Okay, let's see if that worked. Yeah, so there it is now on my mapping too. And we got another bite. Nope, might have might have just missed a fish. So as you can see, there's fish on the other side of that rock. The rock's at 35. I'm gonna throw a little past it and see what happens this time. So I just threw to about 48. The rock's at 30. Oh yeah, here comes, here comes some fish back into the rock. Looks like a couple big ones. All right, that one's going down to eat something. Guess what he's going down to eat? Guess, guess what he went down to eat? <laughs> nice fish and a jumper. He went down to eat my jig, if you, if you weren't guessing right. Nice largey, never been hooked. I'd say pretty good lake. Not bad for the first time here. Oh, he got that a little deeper than normal. Got him. Nice largey. There's still fish on that rock. See it? Coming into the rock. Oh, lost him. keep the boat off the rock. I didn't realize these fish were like pulling me into it every time I set the hook without that wind. All right, that's a perfect cast on the edge of that rock. Let's see what's down there. Oh, Misteam, Misteam. He's gonna come back, I promise you that. What a beautiful boulder that is. And I Misteam. cool thing about finding these offshore fish guys is you can get them stacked and you can you can put a bag together in a hurry so don't give up if your day's not going well just work a little harder and look around and always be ready for when that when you roll up on the right spot that Ned rig I tied on is pretty heavy it'll give me a little different look if I want to throw that in there but I'm gonna look and see if I had a a little wacky sank him out. Got to find that rock again. Oh, there's the rock. It's over here. All right, there's the sweet spot right there. I'm a little long. Okay with that. Check my drag. Got a bite already. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure. It doesn't feel huge yet. Fighting weird. What is he? Little guy? Molly. Nice fish there at 25. I got one way out there at 60. One following him. Whoa! It was heavy, whatever he was. I actually wasn't looking up when he jumped. It's either a largey or a smallie, but he was heavy. Big largey. Big, big pig of a largey. That might be the new lunker. Yep, that's the new lunker. We're not both of Yeah, mother truckers. 
that one's grown. <laughs> that one's a lot closer to where my waypoint is out there. What do you think of that one, guys? We got a bag going together now. That, that one is absolutely grown. Big fish. Nice. Nice. What do you think of this, guys? Is this fun or what? Here we go. Oh, I forgot to tighten my drag. Bury that hook. Bury that hook. All right. She's buried. She's buried. I forgot my drag. I was so jacked up. I think we got another nice one off that rock hump offshore fishing largies, fishing smallies. Oh yeah, another just awesome, awesome largemouth. Not a pig, but not one you'd ever turn down. You'd have to have a sack to turn him down. We got waves coming from both ways. Another nice fish coming off that shoal. That one wasn't even on the rock. Jed, if you're watching this video, you know what bond I'm on. I'm out in your backyard. Got him. Oh. Ooh. Smally? Got him. I love fishing. I think it's a large, he hasn't jumped yet. Yep, another chunker. Oh, he's built just about right. Absolute smash fest, guys. How much fun is fishing? Look at that guy. Look how thick he is. God, this is fun. Just kind of throwing, I got that wacky rig out there. I'm only gonna be in about six or eight foot tops. I'm just kind of dragging it mid-column, you could call it. Just flicking it, and then I let it fall, try to hit bottom. But the fishing has been good enough where I haven't been able to hit bottom very many times with it. Oh. Got him. Got him. Big jump. Ha <laughs> ha, nice jump. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had the camera around for you guys. Sorry about that. Nice, nice jump right there. Horse. Good smallie. One of the bigger smallies right there, guys. He got a little deep. I got to do a little bit of work on him. All right, nice smallie right there. Let's get him back. So as you can see, I switched over to that wacky Sanko because I wanted to fish the column a little bit more than the bottom. And that's quite a few fish on that one in a hurry. And if you use an O-ring, you lose a lot you lose a lot less Sankos and it just kind of chases it up the line like that. Finally getting out over my other waypoint. But you could see, you know, marking that waypoint got me in the area. You know, I just, it was a hard piece of bottom that I ran over, I think as I was on plane. Oh, got a fish on me right now. Did he eat? Yep, he ate. Got him. Not much weight yet, unless he's coming at me. Could be a smallie. It is a smallie and it's a nice one. <laughs> Easy boy. Oh, he finally took my Sanko. That was a heck of a move he just put on me. He got me. Oh gosh. 
why don't they all get hooked like that? There he is. Nice smallie. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. It's just one way you can find more fish, find bigger fish, catch more fish, win more tournaments. So I hope that helps you out. If it helps you out, throw a subscribe on there, throw a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments.